So I've got a short story that I want to share with you guys. It's something that I didn't even think I'd make a video on. It didn't occur to me until the other night that I said, why don't I sit down and talk about it in front of the camera so that not only you guys can see something sort of interesting, maybe something that'll make you cringe, but also something that you can definitely learn from in the future so you don't crash your drone. Because as you can see by the title, I almost crashed my Inspire 2. Now I could be sitting here in front of you as a very sad boy with a broken Inspire 2 that either would need to be fixed or completely replaced but instead I'm very thankful that my skills kicked into gear at the very last second and I was able to pull away you guys are gonna see what I mean in just a second when I show you the clip it's definitely going to make you cringe. Now, for those of you who are familiar with some of my recent vlogs slash flight videos where I share my drone footage and like a short edit or a compilation, you'll know that I love flying close to objects, especially if it's something that's moving. Like this shot is a perfect example. Being able to track this train at a close distance right above the bridge, it's something that just looks so epic to me. And I don't do this because I'm irresponsible. I don't do it because I'm trying to be a daredevil, but I have faith, I have trust in my skills as a drone operator to take one of these shots safely and I think it just looks awesome. It's something that makes me stand out in my opinion. I mean, a lot of people are doing somewhat of the same thing, I would say, but for me, I try to stand out in pretty much any way possible. Now, this translates over to the work that I do for my clients. I love getting creative shots. I love doing something different with my drone and flying close to certain objects is definitely something that stands out. And oftentimes, a lot of the people I do work for love it. Now, just to sort of catch you guys up to speed here, I'm doing some work for a construction company who's building a warehouse here in Pennsylvania, pretty local to my home and I'm just going out and capturing photos and videos of the progression of construction for them to pretty much document, look off of, make changes from the whole nine yards. Now, as I already explained to you guys, I love being creative with the shots that I try to get, whether it be photos, whether it be videos, I love getting these unique angles. And just recently, they started putting up the roof. So this right here is a freeze frame from the video I'm about to show you guys. I figured, let me fly through these poles sticking up out of the ground, holding the supports for the roof. Let me fly through them. Let me try to get a really cool looking shot. And I think maybe you guys might know what goes wrong. I'm going to play this back here. I'm looking at this live. So I begin going down at a pretty slow speed. Also, just to let you guys know, I'm standing directly behind the drone. So I'm flying this thing line of sight just from the back, just to give me a pretty good view of it. And as I get through this roof, it begins to go towards the pole. That makes me cringe every single time. From here, I was trying to find a way out. I didn't want to go back underneath of that roof. And I saw that there was these two openings. So I chose the one on the right and I eventually went up and out and my drone returned back to me safe. You know that feeling that you get when you have like a really close call with your drone? Well, I had that multiplied by like 10. Now there was really no telling what could have happened if I actually crashed my drone. Maybe it could have fallen to the ground and been totally fine, but chances are I probably would have broken like a propeller. The camera, because it's so exposed on the Inspire 2, probably could have broken in some fashion. But honestly, the only thing that was going through my mind the entire time is, wow, if I hit this pole, I could cause damage to the entire building. I could have to pull out some sort of insurance policy against my business and that would just raise my rates through the roof but luckily again I was able to pull that drone over right towards the center now you might be wondering what happened why did your drone just veer over to the side and I can say it's because it flipped into Addy mode if you guys noticed as soon as I went underneath of that roof made of what steel tin whatever they make the roofs out of it cut off my GPS signal completely and the drone flipped into attitude mode now because of this I would recommend practicing flying in Addy mode just in case something like this happens. And when Addy mode kicks in, you've got no help from the sensors. That's why when I was flying, the drone just was pretty much taken with the wind. It was going to go whichever way it wanted to because I had no help from the sensors. And as soon as I made it all the way through the roof, you'll notice that the sensors kick back in and the drone just comes to a hover. So I'm very happy that that happened because if I was still in Addy mode, I would then have to try to maneuver it through all of those big uprights up and out. And that just would have been an absolute disaster so yes I would recommend practicing in Addy mode fly around in a nice big open space understand how your drone works and performs in Addy mode the only bad thing is like if you own a Mavic or a spark you're not going to be able to intentionally flip into Addy mode which is kind of a bummer because it can be helpful in a lot of different scenarios but if you've got a drone like the Phantom or the Inspire you can flip on the back of the remote between P S and a mode Addy mode and just get some practice because I think that that could definitely help your skills 
as a drone pilot in case something like this happens to you. I would also venture to say that all of the metal surrounding my drone definitely had to do something with it, not just the roof above the drone, but also some of the metal laying on the ground that I was hovering above was really messing up the way the drone was angled. When I had the drone just sitting there hovering, it would drift to the left, and then as I tried to move it to the right, it would really drift to the right. So all that metal, definitely not good when flying a drone. You know, as soon as I sat down and started planning what I wanted to say in this video, I knew almost immediately that it would sort of cater more towards the entertainment genre. I mean, the best way to watch a drone almost crash is to watch somebody else's almost crash because it's not yours. And for some reason, those drone crash compilation videos have like millions of views. So I know that people love it. They like eat this stuff up, but also I think it's a great learning experience, not only for myself, but also I get to share it with you guys. Always be prepared to switch in Addy mode. And I guess more generally, always be prepared for the unexpected because something could happen a bird could pop up a helicopter could pop up if you're in like a very populated area I mean again anything could happen always be prepared and also get some practice flying in Addy mode I know that I spoke on that a lot but it could happen for a various number of reasons whether there's an interference issue whether the GPS cuts out whether you have some sort of failure on board you need to know how to fly without actually using those sensors and even if you have a Mavic and you can't flip it in Addy mode intentionally your drone can still go into Addy mode, so be careful. Anyway, guys, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know down in the comment section. I figured this would be like a fun video to sit down and share with you guys. Also, I haven't uploaded in a while. I'm sorry for that, but I promise I'm going to get back to it soon. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.